Facebook Live. Yay! I wore my Spanish dress for you. <laughs> Thank you. The earrings. I'm ready. I'm ready to party. Um, the reason I did that is because uh, talking about cancer has always been such a scary, you know, monster type um, ordeal. But you survived it twice. So that means other people can survive it and uh, heal for life and live a long, 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 long life. <laughs> long, 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 happy and healthy life, you know? Yes. Yes. Certainly. One of the things that I have learned going through cancer is that cancer is not a death sentence. It's All it not. is, is just a call for action. You need to do something in your life. So make a change. That's all you need to do It's just an adjustment. It's going to be like a before and after, but that's it. It's just an adjustment. And if you're smart and it depends on how you actually approach it, you know, you will become not just healthy, but a better person all the way around. At least that's the way it happened to me. I definitely agree. You, I, I think you worked hard and the hard work is paying off. I don't think it was easy. And so uh, we want to say that it's not easy, but it's all in your head at the same time. You can make it easy. You can enjoy the growing process. Um, pain creates growth. And I, I believe with cancer, it's a wake up call. Uh, what about you? What do you, how was, when was the first time you were diagnosed? Let's start there. Of course. Um, but the very first time I was diagnosed, I was uh, 40 years old, uh, 39. So I was actually the youngest a cancer patient, a prostate cancer patient in Los Angeles. Okay? Wow, that's great. Nice. Uh, so the first time, you know, um, in the battle, I lost my, my prostate. So mm -hmm. it got done, it was done. And the second time is what is called a chemical recurrence, oh. meaning that they saw that a little piece of cancer came out of the prostate, oh, wow. you know, which was strange for my age, because I am definitely younger to be uh, dealing with this. So and how long after did that come? The second uh, I was 44, 44, 40, 44 years old. 44, so 45 four years, years old. Or five years after recovery? Yeah, three or four years after, yeah. Okay. You know? And and then I went through a radiation and hormone therapy. And 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 that was that was actually then, you know, that I decided that I needed to sit down and write what I learned. So I put all my feelings and everything in this book. It's called Sun the Universe. You know? and it's in Spanish. In Spanish for now, you know. And then um, the English version is coming out soon, hopefully. The English version is coming up soon. It's actually in the process right now. I'm working on it because when I was working through, it's so funny how life works. But once I start working in what I want to share, to experience, to express myself, to take everything out of my chest, I came out with five steps how to beat cancer. You know, I call it how to make a quantum jump. You can use it to do almost everything on anything in life. Yes. You know, and it was a very five easy single steps being the first one to work in your psychology, you know, work in the things that you believe, work in the things that you see, work in the things that you don't see. Be very careful with the kind of information that you let into your life. I call it to let into your quantum feel to let into your life you know that's beautiful so the first step is work on your psychology what you see what you don't see and what else there was a third thing what you see what you don't see um what you read what you don't read who are you hanging out with you know and you actually on that, yeah. on that note on my psychology i found a very very amazing um tool that's called hoponopono I don't know. Have you ever heard about Ho'oponopono? I have. I love that. I do practice Ho'oponopono. It's a Hawaiian practice. Yes. Love yes. You. yes. It's, it's an amazing Sorry. tool that, that I use to start clearing, cleaning myself. And I'm actually having an interview uh, myself tomorrow with somebody who practices Ho'oponopono uh, that knows a lot of it. So it's very, very cool. Because um, with that, it, it's empower, you know? And, and I think that one of the things that I learned is to get out of the victim mode, the why me, poor me, I'm so bad, and empower myself. And Ho'oponopono was definitely something that helped me feel empowered. It's something I can do and I could do. 
So that was definitely one of the first steps. It was work on that, work, on, work in, in, in the kind of information we get in. How often did you do Ho'oponopono? Did you do it like uh, meditate in the morning, at evening? How did you do your Ho'oponopono? I, you know what? I did it and I still do it actually at all times, but mostly in the morning. As soon as I wake up, and it's so funny because I live right now in a two-story home. Yeah. Okay, and I have a coffee machine. Congratulations. You bought a thank house. You, thank you. Yay. Yay. But, I have um, a lot of Caracas, by the way, and I'm going to be bringing them in. I have a blue one and an egg one. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So, so right now I have, a, a, I live in a two-story home. And it's so funny because in the mornings, what I do is I intentionally wake up in the morning and I go downstairs to turn on the coffee machine and then I walk back to my bed. But I do it this way because I have counted that I get to do four Hoponoponos on the stairs. So oh, each, my way down. each stay in my way up and my way down. So it's eight Hoponoponos. So I was like, okay, before my day starts, I start with my eight Hoponoponos just to open the channels, just to let the energy flow in. Then I go into bed and then I find 10 things that I'm grateful for that day. Why am I going to get out of bed? Make my intention. What is my intention when I get out of this bed today? You know? Okay. So when I'm done with my 10 things that I'm grateful for, I go downstairs, my coffee is ready. And you know okay. what? I'm already feeling happy. I'm ready for the day. So that's one of the little things that you start applying into your life. You start applying into your Ho'oponopono. You just in, in, make it into your life. You know, I'm sure that everybody has something different. Make a your intention, you know, make a your intention to do whatever just to start your day in gratitude. Because to me, that is the key. Gratitude is what's going to open the gates. It's going to open all the wellness, all the goodness into your life. And that's like I do it. I start every day with a hop on upon us, 10 things I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for. And trust me, I am so ready for the day. It sounds so easy. It sounds like it only takes five to 10 minutes max and sets the day right because when you are grateful all you know you attract when you're in a mindful uh, mind uh your mindfulness is all about get, being grateful then we do attract because uh what what we're thinking if we're in in like attracts like if you were in a negative situation or, or mindset we're gonna start the day wrong so get out of bed Put on a big smile, regardless of what's going on. Maybe someone is, you know, losing their house right now during COVID. A lot of people are losing their homes. People don't have money to pay the rent. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things like this are happening. And so I think my interview with you is very, very important for everybody. It's not just for cat. If you had cancer or if you have cancer, it's about everybody who's going through a rough time. I found, you know, you and I had another interview a couple of months ago. I found that your five steps will help with anyone, regardless of, of what the situation you're going through. So yeah, let's keep moving. Maraca! <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you're totally correct. You are right on point. Definitely um, to all those people that are going through hardship right now, you know, I just want to let them know that, like you just say, like attracts like, love attraction, okay? Um, but the universe, your world is mental. So start think, looking for the good in your life. Nothing is completely good. Nothing is completely bad. That's what um, it's, it's all about. It's just to be having a balance, you know? So if you are seeing something negative, just shift your attention to something positive, you know? And some things, it can be so simple just to say, thank you for the bed that I have. Thank you because I have a meal. Thank you because I have an air you know, as, I mean, you start thinking, I want you to start getting into this mindset, you know, more good things are going to start happening to you, you know, and I truly believe that I live by it and it's been working great for me. That's, that's wonderful. That's amazing. Um, I love your process. I remember, you know, Javier and I, uh, work together and I remember you would always have your bowl of fruit with yogurt and all the, that was your, your food and you eat so healthy. Can you tell us about diet? Is that part of the five proponents of your book? Is diet one of them? Actually, yes, because the second step is, is it talks about raising your energy. Raising you know? your energy. And there are many ways to raise your energy. Um, it can be working out, 
you know, I love to work out. Um, definitely the way you eat is very, very important because food can be a medicine or it can be a poison, you mm -hmm. know, depends on what you're eating. So for me personally, um, I do a lot of greens, you know, I do a lot of kale, spinach, everything gets green. It's very, very good for your body and berries. Berries are super, super important. It's full of antioxidants, you know, and yeah, the, 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 the lunch that you're talking about, which I still do, it's just strawberry, Greek yogurt, honey. Honey is super amazing and healthy for you. Cashews and some berries, and that will be my lunch for a while. And I find that when I eat this lunch, it's like for my body, it raises my energy and I feel more like, okay, I can keep going, I can keep going. So at the office, you know, you eat something like that, then you're full and then, yeah, I can keep going. And, and then it's, you eat something. I remember when you brought it in, it's like a thick layer of berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and a thick layer of, of uh, yogurt. It was big, it was, you know, it wasn't a tiny, small thing. And then you topped it with honey and almonds or other types of uh, nuts and it was delicious. And I, I started eating that for a while. And that's kind of like the mono diet. I feel like when the body is healing, and that's one of the things I want people to know who are out there, when your body is healing, uh, the, regardless of what illness you're going through, your stomach uh, needs to concentrate, your intestine, all your organs need to concentrate on getting rid of the poison or whatever illness you have in your body. So a mono diet, basically eating the same thing for a while, tells your body that, oh, okay, this is what I'm eating every day. So it doesn't need to worry about foreign objects coming in. So what it does, especially with berries and yogurts, they get digested easily and quickly. And then, uh, so the body, the rest, rest of the time that it has, it goes into rest. When your stomach is not working, uh, you're not, you know, when the stomach is working, it's kind of like the fight or flight, that same feeling, everything else, all the blood rushes to the belly. So once your stomach is empty with this light diet, your energy goes through the rest of the body and exactly. cancer, heart disease or whatever, or even blood pressure. So that's, it's your body starts curing itself. Exactly. And you know what? A lot, lots of water. I cannot stress enough how important is water for our body. Exactly. Have water, you know, same thing here. I have my bottle of water every day and it's drinking water, you know. I understand that some people like sodas, whatever, but water is what your body is made of. You yeah. give water to your body, you know, you make your body's job easier and it also raises energy. Um, sometimes just have, instead of having in the afternoon, one cup of coffee, have one big glass of water, cold water if you want, and you will see how you start getting energy as well. Because that's what it is, it's just dehydrated, super yeah. important. If people don't like water, a nice thing to do is add mint leaves in it. That tastes good. Mint leaves, cucumber, lemon. You know, you make, I always call it salad water. You know, I put it all in there and drink the water and then you get all the nutrients uh, from, from the vegetables and, or the lemon uh, that you put in. That's another way to uh, amp up your water. So what's number three? So first was work on your psychology. Second was raising your energy with healthy food and exercise. Number, uh, what kind of exercise before we go to number three? What did you, you know? Um, I, it depends on the people's in, in, in health, fitness, or goals, you know? For me right now, because we're in COVID, I've been doing a lot of yoga, a lot of jogging, a lot of uh, calisthenics, just working out at my home, and mm -hmm. that's been great for me. Yoga has been great. It's one of the most amazing tools because you can make it as easy for yourself or as hard for yourself as you want to. Yeah. Uh, and there are a couple of people that I do follow in YouTube that just explain to you very easy. Um, and I would say, you know what, if you are not, people who are not used to work out, walk, as simple as walking. Just walk around the block one time, walk around the block two times, three times, four times, five times. Next thing you know, you're gonna start feeling the movement. Yeah. And it's so important, and this actually, I do talk about that in my book, because if you think about it, the human body is designed for walking, you know? Um, the, we did not have cars the, until the last 200 years. Before that, 
where the only way to get places was to walk in. So we are designed for walking, just use it. You know, we have technology, we have cars and people start getting a little bit more lazy. So don't be lazy, start just thinking that's going to do something for yourself. So dedicate some time for yourself. Wake up early, that's what I do. I wake up at least half an hour to 45 minutes earlier so that I can do my walks. And that, that really helps. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Really it's, it's, it's amazing how easy and simple things you know can can can, can do. Yeah, and, and my third free. step, walking is free. <laughs> walking is free. Walking it's is healthy. Walking. It's yeah. good for you. Yeah. Good for your lungs. Look for everything you know. And once you start walking, then you maybe you. When I start walking, sometimes I do where my I have a book, a good book, you know. Yeah. Uh, st start working on your mind, but you're working on your body. Start working in things. What what kind of information do you want to do? You know. Or so true, so true. Yeah, mm. it's a great time to listen to a brand new book on, you know, there's audio, uh, Audible has great books. Also YouTube, I love YouTube. I listen to a lot of my like podcasts when I walk or just, you know, if I go to um, a hike, I love hearing nature. You know, I don't want to always have some electronics attached to me. Sometimes I go without my cell phone and I just love to walk and listen to nature. That's that's a beautiful sound. Nature, silence, you know, we need it. We need silence. Yeah, get in communion with your creator. I'm not gonna say any, whatever you believe in, if you don't believe in anything, just get in peace with yourself. And you are correct, you know, listening to nature because it has the best and most beautiful sounds once you get to it, you know? And that's so funny because when I was in Greece last year, I do remember the specific sound of Greece. And you guys have been, you probably remember that there is a that's going all day long. And I would say that that is why this country is such a magical country because they are in a different vibration. There's all these animals, they're always yeah. and you feel it in your body. It's amazing, you know, and each place has their own vibration, their own sound. Um, right now, I'm right here in Portland, you know, if I get to go out, listen to the waterfalls, listen to the river going. It's just peaceful. Wow, sounds beautiful. I'd like to visit one day soon, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You should, yeah. you should. It's an amazing country. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're enjoying uh, where you're at now. You left Los Angeles and you're very happy in Portland. That's really great. Oh yeah, Portland has been such an amazing change, you know. And it's, it's just been good for me. Uh, the yeah. air is good, it's clear, the water is good. People are so nice as well, you know, but the people are nice everywhere, you know, honestly. I, there's nothing bad to say about people in LA because I met amazing people like yourself in LA. Thank you so much. Yeah, everywhere where you go, you attract like-minded people. And, and yeah, with, in Los Angeles, we have access to all people from all over the world, which is wonderful. I have a, one, a great group of friends, uh, you being one of them. So uh, what, what about number three? What's next? Yeah. Number three, number three, I call work in abundance, you know, and that I divided in three steps. And I believe that a human, that a person should be, especially when you're recovering, should be working on their health, on their money, and in their love, okay? And when I talk about love, I'm not talking about a love of a partner, which is also valid. It can be a love for your daughter. It can be a love for your pet. It can be a love, whatever but feel love because love is connection cool. with others. Yeah. Be whatever, whatever yourself. Exactly. That's number one. You have to start loving yourself and you have to love yourself to a point that you have enough love to give to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so work in whatever makes you happy. Like I say, if you're a mother or a father and you have kids, love your kids. You know, if you are in a relationship, love your partner. If you love your pet, love your pet. Whatever it is that you love, but be in a, in, a, in a frequency of love, you know? Money, it's also always important to work in a way that you're going to make money. It can be work, it can be through selling, it can be through whatever, but always be thinking about how am I going to make money? Because money is part of abundance and it's very, very important in today's society. So I want to say to people, you know, it's important to always think, okay, what am I going to do today that's going to make me some money, okay? And walk and work on your health. So you work on those three things at the same time, abundance will come to your life because it will start just attracting, you know, and it will like, help like you. Expected, expectation. 
exactly the expectation uh, for your life that that I am abundant. That's exactly. one of my mantras. I say that when I walk, I actually like to say mantras. That's why I, sometimes I don't listen to any. I love to say I have power. That's one of my mantras. I say I'm abundant. I'm healthy and happy. You know, there, there's a lot of things. I just make it up as I go, depending on the day and how I feel. And sometimes I get so excited to start running. <laughs> You know, it, it amps you up when you know or think that you're a powerful person. And we are, because like you said, we are connected to the universe. And when we're in nature, you know, we connect to the universe. And that's one of the things that we need to touch base. I actually just recently watched the movie, the Earthing movie, it's called. And it's about, it's the guy that started talking about earthing, which is, you know, putting your feet on the actual ground, barefoot, walking around barefoot and feeling the heartbeat of mother nature. That's really important. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend that if people are out there listening, go out and walk barefoot in your backyard or your, your front yard, wherever you can. I do agree with you. It's so important. Actually, right now that I'm here in Portland and I get to those uh, walks in nature. I mean, I have this thing that I love, you know, I just love to touch the trees because the trees- Oh my so God, I do that. I, yeah. I touch both. All yeah, trees. I just touch it, you know, and, and you feel you feel the energy of the of the, the tree, and they're such an amazing, wonderful creatures because they are creatures, they are alive, you know. Yeah. And, and some people just don't even look at them, but once you actually go and start enjoying and loving, you know, and you can feel the trees, it's, it's just magical to me because it gives you energy, you know. You connect with Mother Nature, you connect to yourself. It's so important, you know? So that's what I always say. Always, number three, that's what I make it in the middle of my steps. And that was so mm -hmm. important. Always think about abundance, you know? When you, start th when you start thinking only about abundance, abundance will show up in your life. So you say you're putting attention. In terms of abundance in health, abundance in money and love. Exactly. Those three things, you know? Think, what am I going to do today to, 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 to make money? What am I going to do today to make myself healthier, you know? What am I going to do today? And, and that takes me to my step number four, okay. which is to create a routine. You know, it's so important to have a routine, especially when you are battling, when you're, let's say that you're battling cancer. Um, let's say that you are going through a hardship and you want to make money, whatever it is, you need a routine where you put, where you divide your time to do this. I'm going to do this from this to this time. I'm going to do this for this time. So have a routine have a little bit of peace of mind what's going to do and that gives you a little bit of control and you feel better and more empowered when you have that i love what you just said about having control once you do have a routine it's actually a good idea to stick to it so make it easy maybe in the beginning and add on as you get stronger because uh one thing i learned uh, through psychology was that when we create a routine that's very difficult First of all, we don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I got to do all these things. So don't make it difficult. Make it very easy in the beginning. So one of the things like I do for myself when I, you know, when I don't go to the gym for a while because of work or something happened like in the past before pre-COVID, uh, when I went to the gym early in the morning, sometimes I would miss for two weeks. And and it was so difficult for me to go, just leave the house. And I'm like, oh my God, if I go to the gym, I'm going to, I love spin classes. I'm going to do a spin classes an hour. And I would think about, oh, it's going to make me tired. I'm going to be tired for the rest of the day. And all these things didn't want me, uh, it would stop me from going. So you know what I did? What do you do? I, I would say, just go to the gym. That's it. That's and it. not work out. <laughs> as simple yeah. as that. You as, know? Yeah, I was like, I'm just going to go to the gym and say hello to my friends. Because I had made friends with some people. I was like, I'm just going to go say hello. And maybe just go, you know, with my gym clothes on, I'll just go to the sauna and chit chat with the friends that are there. Yes. And that would be my goal. That would be my goal. And then I would go. And then when I got there, I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll just do a 10 minute on the bike. Maybe I'll do 10 minutes. And then it got me going. And then so every morning I would plan to just make it to the gym. So that was it. That was my routine. Just make it to the door. And if I wanted to leave whenever, and I would tell myself, okay, you could leave whenever you wanted to. You didn't have to stay there long. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly. I, I, and you know what? Honestly, this I learned uh, when I was going through a radiation therapy because my radiation was at 8 a.m. every day, you know? So I used to wake up at 4.30 to be at the gym at 5. Because ah. I, I used to think, you know, I will be at the gym at 5, so I will be out there at 7, and it gives me an hour to get to the gym. But I will go to, when, when I used to get to radiation therapy, I had already worked out. I had just showered. I am was dressed to go to work or better, you know. I would walk in there with my energy as high as I could for what I was going through at the time. And it's so funny because the receptionist, you know, she told me that she first told me, you know, you are going to beat that. And I was like, Well, thank you. Why? And she was like, Because your attitude. She's like, go sit down and watch how the rest of the people are coming at 8 a.m. and see how you are coming at 8 a.m. And it's true. I would get at 8 a.m. to my or wash ready, set, suit and tie sometimes, whatever it was. And I will see other people just waking up with a little thing right here. Oh, going to, you know, <laughs> and, and it was, it's, it's the attitude. It's the attitude that I was there to get healthy, you know? They were there to get hurt. So... You were there to get healthy and you knew. In your I knew. Heart. I think one of the secrets to surviving any kind of illness or trauma is to know in your heart, that's number one, know in your heart that you're gonna get through this and you're gonna come out alive, stronger and better. Exactly. Like you had that in your heart. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that was my step number four, you know, and the fifth step, and I'm not going to say the most important, but yet super important, allow, allow, allow the good things to get into your life. It's funny how sometimes you want something and people don't allow it to come into their lives. So it's the art of allowing. Feel that you deserve to be the abundant. You deserve to be healthy, you know? Actually, that's what I call my name, Hijo del Universo, son of the universe. It's because I feel like as a son of the universe, I deserve to have health. I deserve to have money. I deserve to have love. You know, I allow that to get into my life. So as I was allowing to all these wonderful things to come into my life, they will come, you know? So be open, be open. Uh, don't make excuses. Don't, don't say, well, I want this, but it has to come in this way, you know? Yeah. Just you don't choose open. the way it comes in if you allow. If you allow and, and you just make a wish, just make a wish or pray, whatever your religious uh, background is, or if you're spiritual, you know, uh, you want to pray to the gods. If you're a Christian, you pray to, you know, your God and Jesus or, and, uh, and, and just step back. You know, a lot of times I notice that even I do it, I do it a lot. And I noticing is the first thing, noticing that, uh, we are making this mistake of not allowing or thinking, Oh, I want to become a teacher, but I have to have my credentials. I have to have this, I have to, you know, we, Look at all the steps that we don't have. What we do, we, first of all, we need to look at, oh, what I, oh, I have a four-year degree, so it's going to be easy. It's going to be easy to get my credentials because I need this course and that. You know, it's about thinking it differently. I love that. I love number five uh, yeah. and deserving my abundance. Allow. Exactly. Just, just let it, it's so funny because, you know, when I, actually when I was going through radiation, I remember sometimes because we're in real estate. So I would look at magazines. I was like, oh, I like this house. I want a house. So I told myself, you know, I want a house and I want the house to be new. I kind of was thinking about what I wanted in my house. And then when COVID hit, my husband get a job offer. I was in LA, you know, and yeah. he got a job offer to come to Portland. And it just felt right, you know. And I, was, and I knew I had asked for a house. I knew what I wanted in my house. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to allow and let the universe move. I'm going to say yes to whatever comes my way. And I did it. I did it. I just said yes. And when he told me, he was like, well, I have this opportunity, but it's in Portland. And I know you like LA. I was yes. I was like, really? Yes. Allow. I'm allowing it to happen. Yay! And it happened. You know, it was like... Mm -hmm. It was just one thing after the other. It was like a domino effect, like boom, 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 boom. It was, matter of fact, 
months, weeks. I, I remember how quickly you left. You just left. You're like, I'm going to Portland. I'm like, oh, what? What's going on? <laughs> exactly. You just allow it to happen. You just let it happen. Don't get on the way, you know? The universe, God, or whatever you want to believe in, knows what's best for you. Just listen. <laughs> as simple get out as of that. your own way. <laughs> exactly. Let it happen. You know, and I and, and those are the five steps that I come up with. I use them for almost everything. I use it right now for business. I do it because as you're working abundance, everything else is coming your way. Mm. Yeah, and one of the things I learned is that a lot of times when we ask for things, we want it now, 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 and we want everything now, but it's hard to deal with when they all come into your life now. And that's one thing I've experienced with, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, in the past couple of things, I mean, a couple of weeks I've had, I asked for things and I got all of them in one day and it was so much, I couldn't handle, you know, my attention went this direction, that direction. This. So another thing is to be patient. Yes. Learn to, uh, you don't want it all happening all at once because it's a lot to deal with, you know, and then, you, you know, it's a headache because uh, um, you, you need time to, to, to receive and to enjoy that gift that you asked for and then okay next one it may take time and, and, and just allow it by allowing it uh take more naps you know i i listen to abraham hicks love him and, yeah and one of the things i do that that she says is like go to bed go to sleep wake up and you know and take naps in the day because that helps it, it gives you a second chance at life so because when you go to sleep you shut down your mind you shut down everything you asked for and then you wake up with gratitude, like you. When you wake up with gratitude, you give yourself another chance to receive, receive your abundance. Exactly, it's very, very, very easy. It's super simple, so it is possible, it's, it can be done, you know? And right now, I have so many projects in, on hand that is so excited. I don't know if I told you, but I have created a new um, English platform, which I'm working right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know you remember our friend Debbie DiMaggio? Uh, not really, no. No, well, Debbie DiMaggio is a friend. We work together in the Beverly Hills office, and one of my friends from Spain, Diane, and we are having a group of writers called Quantum Family. You know? Quantum Family? Yeah, Quantum Family. And it's got, it's, uh, it, we're starting uh, in, in Facebook, we're doing uh, all kinds of, of, of interviews, and this, tomorrow we're going to be talking about Hoponopono. Last week, we talked about yoga. So it's a platform where we're going to be helping people and bringing people together. And I think it's, it's, it's fun and it's good because I wrote a book, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a gay male, you know. My friend Diane wrote a different book about motherhood and she is a, a, a mother of a baby. And our friend Debbie wrote another book where she talks about beauty at any age. You know, where she talks about I like you know, that. regardless of your age, you are a beautiful human being. So then we take a subject and we see a subject from three different perspectives, you know, like That's yoga, cool. you know. It's, and, it's, and I think that this is adding value to the people's life because like with yoga, you know, I see yoga as a man to practice yoga, but I never thought about looking at yoga from the perspective of a brand new mom who needs time for herself, and, he, and that may be the only time she gets for herself, you know? Or from a Debbie's perspective that, you know, that her kids are grown up and they're out of the house, now she has time to, for herself. So we take different subjects and we look at it from different perspectives of, and different people's in life, different times, different chapters, and it's amazing what we're learning and what we are, because I'm learning a lot of things that I didn't even think about, because it's not in my radar, you know? That's great. That's so wonderful. What is this Facebook group called? Are you sharing publicly or just the three of you? It's sharing publicly. Uh, it's called Quantum Family. Quantum Family, okay. Quantum Family. I'll, I'll send you the information. Um, we're starting with all these. We're very excited. You know, we're looking at different things, different perspectives, uh, different languages. Because, you know, like I speak Spanish and English. And my friend Diane speaks English and Spanish as well. Debbie speaks a little bit of English. And she's Italian. So we're just wow. mixing cultures. Exactly. We're mixing cultures. We're mixing languages. We're mixing. We're making what life should be about. 
which is about diversity. We are embracing the, how diverse we are, how different we are, and yet how equal we are. Because you know, the most amazing thing that I have learned so far is that even though we may look different for some people, at the end, we are all humans. We, we are. are all connected. And it's important to understand that we are connected regardless of how you're looking at life or what life has in front of you at this moment. I love how you put that. You know, I always say humanity has the word unity in it. So we are definitely united. We are definitely one and the same, uh, you know, culturally or, or skin color or whatever. We might be a little bit different, but at the end of the day, we all have the same desire, the same aspiration. Just like your number three, everybody that we know wants to be healthy, wants to have abundance, wants to have love. That is how we are exactly the same. We all have the same desire. We want to have a healthy, health, you know, loving, kind uh, family, and we want to be able to help our community. That is it. I mean, can you meet someone who goes outside these borders? You, you know, you let me know. But most people that I know, when they become abundant, the reason they want to become abundant is to give back to the rest of us because we are all the same. Once, if I am abundant, or when I am abundant and I'm able to like, let's say help Javier, my friend, that's gonna raise my vibration and your vibration. And then what you're gonna do is go out and help your friends and family raise their vibration. So every time we, I raise my vibration, you raise your vibration, everyone around us becomes highly vibrational and we leap. That's when we, we have a quantum leap, we have a human leap, when we all love each other and give back. So I, I definitely don't agree with separation. I truly agree with connection and unity. So if you check out my channel on Ahita TV, that's what we're about. We're about unity. And I love to connect with people like yourselves who are making a difference. You overcome something horrendous, you know. And, and one of the things I don't like in our society is that people, when they be, have cancer, they shy away, they hide. And I want you to know there's nothing to be embarrassed about cancer. That's just something that was sold to us so that we could be scared and we can play small and go in the corner and die. That's not going to happen to you, my friends. If you, God forbid, have any kind of illness, if you have cancer, you are going to survive because you know you are. Look in the mirror, tell yourself, I love you and feel abundant and you can make it. And buy my friend's book. Um, if you speak Spanish and I can't wait for the English version to come out because I'll be your first purchaser. I want a signed copy. <laughs> for sure. You will be it. one of the first people. I'm going to get many of them because I'm going to gift it to all my friends because I feel like what you said, all your five top, uh, you know, your, your five steps, work on your psychology, raise your energy, work on your abundance, create a routine and then allow like these all are tools that we can use in our everyday life. And I really appreciate you for being on my show. Anything else? Like, can you tell the audience where they can get the book? Sure, Our, my book right now is available on Amazon. So as simple as just put my name, Javier Puga Phillips, it will show up, or uh, Son of the Universe, it's already for sale. Um, I'm very, very grateful for everybody who has bought the book so far. So thank you, you know, very grateful for you for having this platform. I've been following you. I've been seeing how you're actually, and that's one of the things I love about you. You are making bridges, you know, you make a bridge between this and that. You are interviewing people from different personal life. You are contributing to this world, you know, and I love people like you because it's for people like you that this world is gonna get better. There is hope, there is love, there is a lot of people who are talking about getting together and united and please follow her for follow anita tv it's just amazing Thank she you. is bringing so much unity she's she's showing us how equal we are Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're so sweet. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay, I got a party. I got all my noise makes. Yeah, I've got this one too. <laughs> That's <is> gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited. I can't wait to, to hear more about uh, what you're doing and all the changes that you're bringing, all the good, good, good stuff that you're bringing us. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate you being on the show and I'd love to hear from you soon. 
Yeah, so for sure. I'll see you later. Yes. Thank you so uh, much for joining me. And thank you, audience, for joining us for another episode of Anahita TV. I appreciate my beautiful guest, Javier. And uh, please go out. If you're speaking uh, Spanish, go out and buy his book. And uh, for us English-speaking people out there, can't wait to see your English version. Please like and subscribe. And we will see you very soon. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Bye.